My name is Alison Van Inenem and I'm a geneticist and biotechnology specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of California, Davis. I'm going to be discussing the cast issue paper number 54 entitled The Potential Impacts of Mandatory Labeling for Genetically Engineered Food in the United States. I would like to acknowledge my fellow authors on this paper, Dr. Bruce Chassie, a Professor Emeriti of Food Science at the University of Illinois, Dr. Nick Kalatzonakis, an economist at the University of Missouri, and Thomas Reddick, a lawyer with the Global Environmental Ethics Council. Genetic engineering can be defined as the manipulation of an organism's genes using the methods of modern molecular biotechnology, particularly those techniques referred to as recombinant DNA or rDNA techniques. Genetically engineered organisms and the products derived from them have found widespread use in pharmaceutical, veterinary, chemical and food processing industries with no documented reports of adverse impacts. For example, the insulin that diabetics used is produced using recombinant microorganisms. The use of genetic engineering in the production of these widely used products is relatively non-controversial. However, the application of recombinant DNA technology to produce genetically engineered plants or animals that we use as food has proven to be highly contentious for some consumers. The purposes of this paper are to explore the scientific, legal and economic aspects of requiring food labelling in the United States based on the use of a process, that is genetic engineering, rather than on some attribute of the food product itself, and to clearly discuss the complex considerations that come into play when contemplating mandatory GE food labelling in the United States. Genetically engineered organisms and the products made from them go by many names, including genetically modified or GM, genetically modified organism or GMO, transgenic, biotech, bioengineered, or products made with modern biotechnology. Given that traditional breeding techniques also result in genetic modifications, and hence this term is not specific for the use of recombinant DNA, I'm going to use the term genetic engineering rather than the more common and pervasive but less precise term GM. Typically, food produced using GE food processing aids or enzymes and the meat, milk and egg products derived from animals that have eaten GE feed or been treated with GE therapeutics or vaccines have not themselves been considered to be genetically engineered foods. The first genetically engineered food product to come to the US market was the Flavor Saver Tomato in 1994 and since that time growers have adopted approved genetically engineered crops extensively. For example, in 2013, GE varieties were grown on 95% of sugar beet land, 93% of soy, and 90% of all cotton and corn acres in the United States. And similar rates of adoption have been observed in other major agricultural producing countries such as Argentina, Brazil, Canada, and South Africa. In 2013, approximately 433 million acres of genetically engineered crops were cultivated worldwide by an estimated 18 million farmers. As a result of the widespread use of this technology in agriculture, many food products in the United States include ingredients such as corn oil, soy protein or beet sugar that might have been derived from a genetically engineered crop variety. It has been estimated that at least 70% of the processed food items in the supermarket contain at least one ingredient derived from a genetically engineered crop, often the additive soy lecithin or various oils. This map shows recent state-based food labelling activity. At least 25 states have considered proposed legislation to mandate the labelling of food containing genetically engineered ingredients. Two recent statewide initiatives, one in California in 2012 and one in Washington in 2013, were not supported by a majority of the voters. The only mandatorily labelling law enacted to date is an Alaskan law that requires the labelling of genetically engineered fish products, none of which have yet been approved for food purposes by the Food and Drug Administration. And some laws in Connecticut and Maine have passed with limitations, that is, one bordering state and three other states with a total population collectively exceeding 20 million people must enact similar legislation in order for the labelling rules to take effect. 
There are three main themes that are often associated with mandatory GE labelling. The first is public opinion. On the pro side, polls show an overwhelming majority of people support mandatory labelling of GE foods when specifically asked whether the federal government should require labels on food saying whether it's been genetically modified or bioengineered. On the con side, in unprompted polls, in which participants are asked what additional labelling they would like to see on food, more than 99% of respondents do not volunteer a desire to see mandatory labelling of GE foods. The second theme is that of consumer choice. It has been argued that people should have a choice regarding what types of products they purchase and consume. Many believe that this should include the choice to vote with their wallets about how the food was produced, even if it does not result in any change or consequence for the food product itself. Others argue that US consumers who want to avoid genetically engineered products already have that choice available through voluntary, non-GMO and organic labelling programs. Further, in countries that have implemented mandatory genetically engineered labelling, GE products have generally been removed from the market, so in fact choice has actually been reduced. The third theme is that of the right to know. People in support of labelling say that people have a right to know what is in their food. Mandated calorie and nutritional content panels on packaged foods are examples of labels to inform consumers about food composition. However, the right to know what is in food is different than the right to know what process was used in the production of that food. Further, this uniquely singles out genetically engineered technology and not other production methods and processes for the right to know. Polls suggest consumers would like to see label information about many production methods and processes, for example whether crops have been sprayed with pesticides. Mandating process-based food labelling is a very complex topic with nuanced marketing, economic and trade implications depending on how the labelling laws are written and how the market responds. Many of the state labelling initiatives have included text suggesting that there are remaining food safety concerns about genetically engineered food and as such mandatory labelling should be required. It is important to note that during the past 20 years the FDA has performed a pre-market food safety assessment on all commercialised genetically engineered crops. The type of evaluation they do looks for risks that might be associated with newly introduced nucleic acids, novel proteins included by the inserted genetic material, and both intended and unintended changes in composition that might be associated with the development process. In all cases, the FDA has determined that the genetically engineered crops are equivalent to their conventional counterparts. This is in agreement with scientific studies from all over the world by independent scientists where genetically engineered crops have been fed to a variety of species, some of them long-term and multi-generational studies, and in general these studies have supported the conclusion that there are no detrimental effects from the consumption of the currently available genetically engineered crops. Although a handful of widely publicised small studies have claimed to find adverse health impacts of genetically engineered foods on animals, these studies have been retracted and or severely criticised by government and mainstream scientific organisations as poorly designed and unreliable. In the United States, the Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act grants authority for food labelling to the FDA. A label is misleading if it fails to reveal material facts about a product. The FDA would require labels on products that demonstrably pose novel hazards that might affect safety or have significant unexpected differences in composition. These are material facts. In contrast, production methods that create no material difference in products require no special labelling. The FDA has stated that it has no basis for finding that GE foods differ from other foods in any meaningful or uniform way or that as a class foods developed by the new techniques present any different or greater safety concern than foods developed by traditional plant breeding. Therefore, since genetically engineered production methods create no material difference in products, no label is required for genetically engineered foods. It should be noted that the FDA does allow voluntary processed-based labelling as long as it is not false or misleading. In 2001, the FDA put out a draft guidance that set forth requirements for industry 
as to acceptable language for voluntarily labels on products not containing any genetically engineered ingredients. There are a number of voluntary process-based labels available to address consumer food preferences in the market. Some examples of such labels are shown on this slide. In recent years, a large number of food products indicating the absence of genetically engineered ingredients through non-genetically engineered labels have also been offered in the US marketplace. Food manufacturers and retailers have voluntarily labelled such products and often third-party organisations have certified the accuracy of these claims. More than 14,000 food products and 800 brands are reported to have been certified as meeting the non-GMO project standard alone. Some US food merchants have gone even further. For example, the retail chain Whole Foods Markets has set a deadline that all products sold in its US and Canadian stores must be labelled to indicate if they contain genetically engineered ingredients by the year 2018. These voluntary measures provide consumers non-GE choices in the US marketplace. There are three major legal issues that are likely to be associated with state-based laws requiring the labelling of food containing genetically engineered ingredients. The first is the Commerce Clause of the US Constitution, which forbids individual states from unduly burdening interstate commerce. The second is the Supremacy Clause of the US Constitution, which states that federal law prevails in a conflict with state law. The FDA has taken the position that process-based labels would not be required for genetically engineered food products that are comparable in composition to similar conventionally produced food products. And finally, the First Amendment protection for commercial speech, which prohibits government compulsion of commercial speech unless the speech is factual, uncontroversial and reasonably related to government interest. This was used in 1996 to prevent the mandatory process-based labelling of milk produced from cows that had been treated with recombinant bovine somatotropin. The court held that gratifying consumer curiosity by mandatory labelling of an accurate factual statement was insufficient to compel speech if it involved neither health concerns nor other substantial interests. An alternative to state-by-state -state laws would be the implementation of a national law requiring the labelling of genetically engineered food. There are some international trade implications that would result from the passage of such a law. The 1994 Sanitary and Phytosanitary Agreement of the World Trade Organization frowns on process-based labels, mandating disclosure of information on production process issues that do not relate to food safety. And finally we come to the complex economic issues associated with GE labelling. As mentioned earlier, there are non-genetically engineered food choices available to interested consumers. However, they tend to be more costly than conventional foods. The incremental costs associated with the production of these foods is not fixed and is partly dependent on alternative purity standards and tolerances. When tolerances are set to be very low, segregation methods must become more stringent. And when that occurs, the incremental production, segregation and certification costs of non-GE products increases disproportionately. Some have argued that a zero tolerance is appropriate. A zero or near zero tolerance for GE content would be commercially challenging, if not impossible to achieve at a large scale, given the widespread use of this technology in agriculture. And finally, there's the cost of mandatory GE labels themselves. Wildly different estimates are associated with this cost, and it really depends on how food manufacturers, food retailers, and other food merchants would choose to act if mandatory GE labeling was put in place. The added costs would really involve an estimation of the share of the food market that might become non-GE in order to avoid requiring labeling and an estimation of the costs that would be incurred to procure ingredients and reformulate products to contain no genetically engineered ingredients. The actual costs associated with mandatory labelling will depend upon how the law is actually written. In some states there is a clause that effectively introduces a time limit allowing products containing less than 0.9% GE content to be exempt from labelling until July the 1st of 2019. It is unclear what happens after that time. If presumably all covered food products containing any level of GE content would need to be labelled, then this is effectively introducing a zero tolerance. As explained previously, trying to achieve a zero would lead to greater costs from mandatory labelling and would be difficult if not impossible to achieve in practice. Zero tolerances would also increase uncertainty in the food supply chain. 
When food manufacturers and retailers choose to use non-genetically engineered ingredients in order to avoid labelling, they depend on testing and certification to guarantee the authenticity of such ingredients. Sampling, testing and certification depend on statistical processes, however, and hence all are subject to some error, which increases at very low tolerances. Under some state GE labelling laws, this type of error could open up firms to potential liabilities for misbranded products. Another factor that will impact the cost of labelling is the exemptions. Many of the state labelling bills contained exemptions for different categories of food, milk, meat and eggs from animals that had eaten genetically engineered feed, alcohol, restaurant meals and organic food. And the implementation costs of genetically engineered labelling will be affected by which of these categories are exempt. And finally, there's the issue of who pays. Given the proposed rules and exemptions, younger and more affluent consumers who spend more on organics and food away from the home would be the least affected by the costs resulting from mandatory GE labelling. The incremental costs of any mandatory labelling regime in the US would extract a greater burden on low-income families. In summary, all domesticated crops and animals have been genetically modified in some way. There is no science-based reason to single out genetically engineered foods and feeds for mandatory process-based labelling. Wide-ranging evidence shows that genetic engineering as a technology is equally safe to conventional breeding. Mandatory labelling based on process abandons the traditional US practice of providing for consumer food preferences through voluntary product differentiation and labelling. Market-driven voluntary labelling measures such as Organic, the Non-GMO Project and the Whole Foods Initiative currently provide consumers with non-genetically engineered food choices in the US marketplace. Current labelling authority is federal. State mandatory labelling laws may be invalidated for conflicting with preemptive federal authority and may also violate First Amendment rights. Labelling at the national level has trade implications and needs to be harmonised with international trade agreements that frown on mandatory labelling for a production process when there is no scientific evidence that the process relates to food safety. Mandatory GE labelling would increase food costs. The size of this increase will depend upon the choices made in the marketplace by suppliers and marketers and what products are included in lab labelling requirements. If, as in other countries, sellers move to non-genetically engineered offerings in response to mandatory labelling, food costs could rise significantly and these increased costs would exact a greater burden on low-income family. If, on the other hand, food suppliers choose to label virtually all products as containing genetically engineered ingredients without testing or segregation, increases in costs might be minimal. That concludes this presentation. For those of you that are interested in downloading the entire paper, it's available at the CAST website, www.cast-science.org, and I thank you for your time.